Hello and welcome to another Blunder Cookie tutorial. This is David Ward and in this part 5 of our Dragon series we're going to start in on getting some nice looking textures on this guy. Uh, first thing we need to do when creating textures is give him seams. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to hit N to get rid of the properties panel there and I'm going to go ahead and grab my translate manipulators. See those turn to arrows instead of the boxes. And uh, if we look over here in the modifiers, we can see that the mirror is still turned on. That's what I want. I want to keep it on until I'm done adding the seams to this side because when I apply it, it'll automatically apply them to the other side. It'll save us a little bit of work. So anyways, let's jump in here and, and start doing these seams. So let's tab into edit mode. And since he's got kind of a long face, we're not going to do the typical, let's go to edge select mode by the way, we're not going to do the typical, you know, um, uh, unwrap like like a normal face. So we're going to have to cut it into two. So we'll go ahead and let's select, uh, let's go, hmm, well, we'll, we'll get that later. Uh, but I want to separate this out here. We're going to do it at the mouth. So just separate, or just select, uh, these guys here. Control E is going to mark the seam. And we're going to go ahead and come on back here to the ear, which is going to be right there. So Control E right there as well. And we'll just select that line there. And we'll go ahead and, oops, I forgot to hold down Shift. There we go. Control E, mark that seam. And let's get this bottom edge of the ear unwrapped. There we go. You might notice it's kind of rotating in a weird area there. I want it to rotate around what I have selected. Now we can do two things. We can go Control, or is, let's see, a Shift C, and it'll zoom everything out, but yet it'll center it. So when we zoom in, well, I take that back. Um, it kind of re recenters the scene, I guess, but uh, not quite where I was wanting it. But the way to do it where I was wanting it is to hit the period button on your numpad. Your, I guess your decimal button, since it's a number pad, it'd be a decimal, I guess. And that'll center what you have selected right there and zoom in on it. So anyways, so that's Control E. Let's mark a seam right there. And we got the ear and part of the face. Let's go ahead and cut him right there and then on the back of the head. But I don't want to add the seam to the ear, so what I'm going to do is hit C to bring up the, uh, I guess you could call it a selection paint and I want to hold down alt and just click and drag on the ear to deselect those edges there we go and just right click to get out of there and now we will control E and mark those seams so now we have some sections already set up here you got the top of the head the bottom of the mouth the jawline and the ear and when it unwraps the ear it's gonna kinda fold it over it's gonna fold it out I guess you could say. It's going to take the back and kind of fold it up like this and flatten it out that way. And that'll save us from having two separate pieces for the ears. Okay, so let's uh, let's worry about, let's do the horns real quick I guess. Let's go in here and select the lower, the most, lower most I guess you could say outline of the ear inside there which would be right there. And we'll go control E, mark the seam. And let's see, let's uh, let's grab this guy and bring it on up into right there. And we'll, un uh, we'll mark a seam right there as well. Okay, now let's do the inside of the mouth. And one way we can do that to where we can see it a little better is if we go to the face select mode, we can select one of these faces in here and we hit Control L, it'll select everything. Looks like I'm, yes. I need to complete the seam right here on top of the head. So I'll just grab the edge select mode again. Hit A to deselect everything and just grab these guys and control E, mark the seam right there. Okay, so now when I select one of the faces, control L, it'll select just that segment. It only works in face select mode. If you use a vertex, it's going to select the whole model. See? So you have to do it by face. Let's see if it will it work with edge. Nope, that selects the whole model too. It has to be face. So do that. Boom. Let's uh, let's select all of these guys up here, just to say I have to select a piece of them, 
and we'll hit H to hide them so we can see the mouth a little bit better. Okay, so we can look at our little indentation here, and that's where the tongue is going to start out. So let's separate that from the rest of the mouth. Add a seam to it there, mark the seam, and then let's add a seam. Let's see, what would be the best way to do this? Let's do it right down the middle of the bottom. Oops, don't need that one. Zoom in a little bit. A little easier to select when you're zoomed in a little bit. Okay, and you can see it kind of stops here, and that's where it separates out uh, into the into the uh, where it forks, where the tongue forks. So let's do this. Let's just keep selecting along the bottom of it to about right there. And I think that'll work. Let's go control E, mark that seam. So now when it unwraps it, it's going to unwrap the bottom out. And so we'll be able to apply any you know, rough texture, anything we want to do, like taste buds or whatever, which we probably won't get into. But uh, we'll do that along the top of the tongue there, and it'll wrap around, and it'll look nice. So, okay. So we got all that done. Uh, the teeth, let's go ahead and do those. Let's grab our face select here. Just grab a couple of faces there. Control L and hide. Okay, now we can see the tongue a little easier. See where it's going to be unwrapped. Okay. I guess it's fine. We don't need to hide it. But let's go ahead and, and mark the teeth. They're pretty much all going to be the same color, but it's a good idea to go ahead and unwrap them anyway. So let's just uh, tell you what let's do. Let's uh, grab that second most furthest back loop right there. Let's just select all those. Like so. And now, so that doesn't cut that into two separate pieces, let's deselect the very top piece, like so. So now each one of these teeth will have one unwrapped uh, piece when we, when we go to unwrap the UV coordinates. Let's go ahead and mark those, and now we will work on the bottom teeth. Same deal, this guy here. Okay, and same thing down here. Deselect that. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the paint again, the uh, selection paint. I'm not sure if that's its technical name or not, but that's what I'm going to call it. So hit C, and we'll hold down Alt and just click in there. That'll be a lot easier than trying to make sure you click on the right one, although I overcompensated on that one, so it's Control. Just right click out and control Z and let's try it again. Let's make our selection a little bit smaller. There we go. Yeah. That's better. Oh well. Oops. <laughs> well, heck. Let's uh, go in here and do it manually, I guess. Let's select that one and we need to select this guy in here and here and here again and one. No, oh, there we go. Mark the seam. Okay. Okay, that'll work. Now we go Alt H and it unhides everything. So there we go. So we got the head pretty well done. Let's go down and let's do the neck. I want to cut the neck off right about, uh, that'll be fine right there. We'll go ahead and add a seam to it. Okay. And let's add one straight up the center of it until it meets the head. About right, oops, right there. Control E, mark that seam. Okay, so we're getting along pretty well. Let's go ahead and save this. Save as, I'm going to call it Dragon05 because this is part 5. There we go. I already was playing with this yesterday, so I already have a file saved. I'll just overwrite, save as, and save over, yes. Okay, now let's go on down the body and we'll mess with the limbs after we get the body and tail situated. Go ahead and select that loop. Good. Control E, mark it. And like I said before, if you go to the face select mode, it's a good, good uh, 
practice to go ahead and you know every once in a while while you're marking seams just make sure you're you're getting everything separated out the way you want and we are so we're good okay back to edge select mode and go ahead and select down the body here now I could go ahead and just hold on alt and just click right click on there but see what it does it selects all the way around and I don't want to do that so I'll just do it the old-fashioned one at a time way I don't know if you could really call that an old-fashioned way or not because <laughs> this is CGI and CGA is not really old-fashioned so we'll just undo that last one let's control E mark the seam now we have it all the way up the tail I would go all the way to the tip of the tail but since we have those fins on there I want to do a little bit differently on there kinda of like we did at the head and just go ahead and select that loop and control E mark that seam and now I want to cut the tail into um, let's see what's the best way. I guess the best way would just be to select around the edge. Let's grab that one. Around the edges. And get in there. Like, oops, like so. There we go. And you know what? It might be a good idea to keep this one piece as well. So let's deselect this very last guy. Yeah, let's select the deselect the last two. So now it'll unwrap it, and it'll kind of have a a figure eight look almost because this will be one piece and this will be the bottom piece. So, trolley, mark the seams, and go ahead and save. I like to save often, as you are well aware. And let's start on this front leg. Let's grab this guy right here, mark it, and let's go down to about where his wrist would be. Grab that one, mark it. And let's uh, let's select about in the middle right here. Let's see, yeah. And mark on. Okay. Let's do the same thing on the back leg real quick. Grab that one. Let's go to Control E, mark it, and then around the ankle mark it and then the back legs are arranged a little bit differently from the front legs as you can see there's a little bit of twisting going on in the topography um, I don't think it'll have any problems when we go to animate might be a good idea to clean that up but like we said we are uh, we are done with the modeling stage so we'll just leave it alone for now we'll go ahead and select in here get that seam marked okay now I just need to do the hands and feet and I think the way I'm going to do those is kinda like gloves I'm just gonna grab this one the middle one control E mark it and now we'll have a top of it a top part and a bottom part we'll do the same thing back here nice and easy and we, we ha what we have left are the claws and we'll do those the same way we did the teeth just select these guys right here Oops. Zoom in a little bit. Okay, and we'll do the front feet first. And let's deselect. Oops, I hit E and extruded by accident. Some of you might have run into that sometimes. Proves for a very ugly mesh when you do that by accident. You're like, what does that look like that for? Well, maybe you hit E instead of Control E. Anyways, let's deselect that one part in each one of these guys. I think it selected two of them. Select that back and that one. Okay, and now we will control E, mark the seams. <clears throat> Almost done. Well, then we have the wings, I guess. But that won't take long. Oops, there we go. And C, Alt. Deselect and finally, boom. There we go. Control E, mark them. Okay. Go ahead and save. Apologize if I'm over modulated a little bit. I can't always control the volume of my voice. <laughs> no. My microphone settings are a little odd sometimes. So, anyways, maybe it sounds a little better now. Maybe too quiet. Turn it back up just a tad. Okay. Anyways, back to where we were going. Let's go ahead and 
Select the base of the wing right there. And right there. And that guy. Control E. And I want to do this kind of like the ears. I don't want to completely unwrap the whole wing. I want to do it and kind of have a spine on it like a book. So let's do that. Select this edge here. And it's going to select up to that first little joint. Select there, and then that guy. Same deal. And I just select there, it'll select the whole thing. And finally, this guy. And a little bit up in here. And we'll control E, mark that. And the wings are now unwrapped. Okay. Let's go ahead and tab out. Go ahead and save. And we're done. We're done, uh, done doing the uh, the UV unwrapping. Uh, now, what I want to do is I want to grab all this stuff here. Well, let me just grab the dragon himself. Go into uh, wireframe view and grab his eyeballs. There we go. Zoom out, and I'm going to select the inverse, which are the lights and cameras and everything. And I'm going to M, move them to a different layer. I'm going to put them all the way over in the top right. That's where I like to keep my lights and scene elements, things like that. Don't worry, they're still there. You can see this little layer here. It's got a dot on it. That means there's something there. So if you click on there, there's all our lights. There's our model. If we hold down Shift, click on that one, we got them both visible at the same time. But we don't want the lights visible right now because we're going to sculpt. Let's grab our dragon here and let's do a Shift D, duplicate him. Go ahead and click him into place. And we're going to move him also to a different layer. Let's just put him on the second one right there. Okay, and then we'll go to that second layer. And let's go over to the modifiers and let's turn off, just delete the subsurf modifier. Actually, we also need to apply our mirror. So we'll go and apply that one, go back to the first layer, grab this guy, go and apply that one. And let's tab into edit mode. You can see that it copied our seams over to the other side when it mirrored it. Nice and fancy. Okay, tab back out. Now let's go back to the other layer, go ahead and save. And now we're going to add a grab the guy first, add a multi-resolution modifier. I need to close my email. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so we added our multi-res modifier. Let's subdivide it a few times. I like to go up to around three or four, but since I'm also hogging my graphics card by recording video, I'll just go to three. And there we go. Okay. So now, one thing we can do to help speed things up is turn on optimal display for one, and then go to sculpt mode, and over here, scroll down, turn on fast navigate. So that way, when we zoom around, it doesn't show the high resolution. You can kind of see it smooth up after we let go. Kind of, kind of bland, kind of bland, smooths up. So that's a way to kind of navigate around your scene when you're using the high resolution sculpt. Okay, so another thing I need to turn on is the symmetry on the x-axis. And we kind of go over the tools here. Draw kind of just does that. You can use it for drawing like blood veins and things like that. Let's see if we can get it to work here. Let's draw on there. Nope, nothing. Let me try it down here. Draw. <laughs> kind of ugly there. Make sure I'm I, people have told me that these are these settings are for custom tools, but I can never get them to work the way I want to. So, anyways, draw seems to be the only one right now that's given me any hassle. Smooth tends to work well. Let's grab, make it bigger. Hmm, it's not working well from here. Let me <laughs> see if it'll work well from up there. Bigger. Kind of work. You can kind of see it. Yeah, there it goes. The strength isn't very high. So bring that up. Yeah, there we go. But I don't want to smooth anything. Just go ahead and undo all that. Let's undo a few times. Not sure where I went there. Pinch kind of does that. We we saw that when we were creating those creases along the uh, the corners, like around the, the neck here. Just use that. And it'll make a little sharper crease there. Go ahead and undo that. Inflate kind of does the opposite. It, I think I have it set to negative right now. No. Subtract. Hmm. 
settings are a little weird. You can also kind of draw with with this guy. Do blood veins if you wanted to. Let's undo all that and do again. Grab kind of just does that. It grabs a part of the mesh and just moves it around. Undo. Layer, which was what I'll be using to create our little subtle scale marks. I'll show you that when I get to it. Flatten just does that. It flattens a mesh from a certain angle. There we go. And clay kind of almost does the same thing as layer. Um, I don't really know how to explain what it does. You can just the strength is way too much for that. You got to have a very low strength or it'll kind of screw things up. And we'll go to subtract as well. Oh, I know why subtract. Our our normals I think are backwards. So let's tab in edit mode, select everything, and we'll go Control N and uh, flip our normals. So now I think everything should be fine. When I come out of edit mode, go to Add. You can, now you can see it adding. Gotta watch those normals. Sometimes they look fine, but they're not. Let's undo all that. Okay, so, like I said, layer is what we're going to do, and that kind of just adds individual layers. As you can see, kind of just raises it up a little bit. Like so. Okay, undo all that. And you know what? That was that was a kind of a pixelated mesh as I was drawing that. I'd like, let's subdivide it one more time. I'm afraid, hopefully it won't screw up my machine. Everything changed to four. All right. Go ahead and save that just in case we crash. And it takes a while to save when you have, when you're playing with these high polygon counts. Okay. So now let's zoom in here and let's start painting our our little subtle scales. I want to put a few like on his nose, around his head. Just click and drag, kind of circle my mouse around a little bit. Right there, you can see I'm meeting in the middle because that symmetry on the x-axis is turned on. Right there. Maybe a couple right there. This is all relative, all subjective. You can put them wherever you want to or if you don't like them, you don't have to put them anywhere at all. So I'm just kind of putting some in there just to give him a little bit of a variation there. Let's put some down in here. Variation there. Let's put some down in here. And you only with the with the the symmetry X turned on. You only have to do it on one side, and it automatically gets copied over to the other side. So that'll save you quite a bit of work. And then if you want some variation, like say you want want him to have a scar on one eye but not the other, well you can just turn it off, and then there you go. Undo that. Okay, let's turn it back on. And I want to go ahead and save. Save often when you're doing this because, like I said, it can crash your machine with no warning at all. Okay. Now, let's kind of go on down the neck. Let's put a few more here at the top of his head. See those kind of getting... Oops, undo that. Okay, that'll work around his head. Maybe let's come back around his jaw a little bit more. Right, right there. There we go. Okay, now let's kind of do down here around the top of his shoulders. Just a little bit of random dragon spots, if you will. Okay, come on down. Let's put some around his toes. And 
just wherever you think you want to put them. You just you go go nuts. Okay. Let's get maybe some more down in this area here. And let's get maybe around. His hind legs up there. And down around his back toes as well. Okay, looking good. Go ahead and save. And we're done. Okay. Go ahead and let's put a few at the base of the wing here. Okay, and then Maybe on this first joint we'll put a few. Yeah. Okay. And maybe one or two inside here. Now I'm getting carried away with it, huh? Let's go put a couple around his tip of his tail there, kind of like we did on his nose. Zoom in a little bit there. Let's undo those two. Do them again. There we go. That's kind of ugly. Let's do undo those all together. Maybe put a couple up in here. Hmm. Not very. High resolution on our tail there, I don't guess. There we go. Nah, I don't want those. Go to stick the one. On. Stick with the one. Maybe a couple on top of his wings back here. Yeah, there we go. Go ahead and save. Okay, now let's go back to object mode, and let's go back to the uh, the first dragon layer, and let's go ahead and turn the subdivisions down to one, and let's turn on that second layer again. Actually, let's do this. Go to the first layer, grab the dragon. We're going to have to unwrap his UV coordinates first, and the way I'm going to do that, I'm not going to go down to the UV editing uh, um, layout like we did before. I'm just going to grab the corner over here and just click and drag and it'll create two windows. And I'll turn this window into my UV image editor and I want to turn off my my toolbar here, my tool shelf, so I can do two things. I can grab the edge of it and just drag it over and let go and it'll be gone and then you can click the little plus sign to see it again. Drag it, plus, drag it Plus, or you can hit T on your keyboard and it'll do it automatically. <clears throat> so I want to go ahead and hide it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And let's go to texture paint mode and then we'll tab into edit mode, select everything, and we'll go over here and we want to create a new image. And it gives my settings here underneath there. I can't see them for some reason. Now let's. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat's drying out. Let's just do this real quick. Let's go UVs. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me grab a glass of water real quick. Ah, uh, that's better. Okay, one more sip. <sighs> La agua es bueno. Okay, <clears throat> let's do this. Go to UVs, and we're going to unwrap. 
and it unwraps all of our UV coordinates there nice and flatly. Now, uh, I don't want a black image. Let's turn on, let's try this again. New image. There we go. Now we can see. UV test grid is what I want. And let's make it 2400 by, you know what, let's make it 3000. 3000 by 3000. The higher resolution your image is, the more detail you can get into it. Okay, so now if I turn on the textured mode here, we zoom in, you can kind of see if I deselect everything and just come into object mode, you can see the uh, everything's pretty well evenly spaced, but everything's kind of backwards. You can see into him rather than him being solid. So maybe earlier when I flipped the normals, I did it incorrectly. Let's do it again. Tab into edit mode, select everything, control N, flip our normals. Now tab back out. There we go. Now it's all correct. And you see all these squares are pretty pretty well the same size and that's about what we want. So that means everything on our UV test grid over here, all of our UV coordinates that we unwrapped are pretty well evenly spaced, pretty well the same size on the map the way they should be. So, okay. So let's just tab out. We're going to go ahead and save. Take a little bit again. Okay. And let's go ahead and get rid of our tool shelf again. Okay. Now, Let's go back to solid view, and let's turn on the uh, the high res version. We got dragon. If we click on the other one, we got dragon 001. That's how we'll designate between the two. And now what we're going to do is create a tangent normal map, which I'm seeing. I'm sure you've seen Jonathan Williamson do, and uh, I'm going to do the same thing here. So we'll just go to the scene settings. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. Go to bake, and we want to bake the normals. And the normal, let's bring this out so we can read it. Normal space will be tangent. That means whatever is whatever it's touching or nearby, that's how it will map out this texture map, this normal texture map. And we want selected to active, and I like to set the margin fairly high. Usually, I go 10. That means this, so that, so that way there's not any seams in between. So. Okay, so selected to active, we need to grab our low polygon version first, Dragon, and then hold down Shift and click the high res version. And now, go ahead and save just in case we crash while we're doing this. And now we will hit bake. You can see the kind of the progress bar right here. And if everything goes correctly, we'll start seeing it render out here in a few seconds. Any minute now. Okay, no image is found to bake to. Sometimes you get this problem. I run, I run into this problem pretty often. Uh, both models, I guess, have to be have to have a texture map uh, applied to them before you can bake to it. Apparently, so let, we got one on the low poly version. Let's go to the high poly version. Let's go over here. Just select that one layer. Tab into edit mode, and and I guess what we'll do is we'll have to, uh, yeah, we need to go to texture paint first, and then tab into edit mode. Now we can unwrap our UVs, and go ahead and select the, which one was it? Untitled 05. Let's go ahead and name that. Uh, UV test grid dragon there we go okay so now that's applied to our model go to the textured view just to see yes okay back to object mode and everything copacetic oh yeah what we did when we flipped the normals it was on this model not the other one so I was right okay um, okay back to solid view and we'll go back to that first layer, make sure everything's still good on it. Yep. UV test grid. All right. So now when we get to the point where we bake, tab back out of edit mode, turn on this layer, deselect everything, select our low version first, click it twice so we can get to the other one. Hold on shift, select the other one, 
And now let's go bake. I go ahead and save it, just to be safe. Better safe than sorry. And now we'll bake. So hopefully everything will work properly now. And we'll see it start rendering here in a few seconds. Any minute now. There we go. You can see it render out. Zoom in a little bit. And we zoom in real far, you can see everywhere where we used our sculpt tool, it uh, it's kind of made a difference on the map. So that's good. Now we can turn off this other layer. You could go ahead and delete that dragon if you want to, which you might as well. You don't need him anymore. I'm going to keep him because I have future plans for that guy. That's just a secret between you and me. Don't tell anybody. But now I'm going to go ahead and save this as, we'll save it as Dragon Tangent. You can see where I've been playing with this texture settings before. Uh, dragon Tangent Normals. We'll use that one. So we'll save as, save over. Okay. So now let's go ahead and collapse this guy. Uh, the, re the way to get rid of uh, two windows when you have it like this, just click and hold just like you did before. And sometimes <laughs> sometimes it doesn't want to cooperate. But if you just click and hold, you can see the arrows. And we'll just click and drag. There we go. Oops. 3D view. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply that new normal map to our little dragon here. Let's go to the Materials tab. And let's go ahead and just delete this default one that it has. That can cause problems sometimes. So we'll just delete that, add a new one, and let's call this one Dragon Texture. Let me move my microphone cord texture. There we go. Pop over to the Texture tab, add a new one. It's going to be Image or Movie. And we'll grab the Dragon Tangent Normal. You can see it. And image sampling, going to be normal map from the tangent space. Going to collapse that. Mapping is going to be UV. And influence will be not color, it will be uh, geometry normal. And it's set to 1. That might need to be negative 1. We'll see. Let's go to uh, preview, turn it to both so we can kind of see. I like to use the monkey. So we can see the map and then kind of what it's going to look like on the model. <clears throat> so let's turn our layer on that has our lights and camera. And let's adjust these. I'll pull this out some so we can get more of the dragon in the light. Let's do it and go ahead and uh, adjust some of the settings. Go to the lights. And right here we see fall off. That needs to be inverse linear. And do the same thing on this guy, inverse linear. And the clip in. Let's drag that way out say 50 around 50 will be fine same thing over here around 50 and go up here distance let's make that around 50 as well and on this guy around 50 okay uh, be warned I have a pizza on the way so when it gets here I'll probably call this one good it's kinda coming up on time for it anyways okay so we got our lights set up let's go ahead and save Let's go look at the camera and let's go ahead and render out, see what it's going to look like. Yeah, that's way far away. Okay, this is looking a little odd. It's not wanting, it doesn't look like it's uh, complying to our UV map that we gave it. So, hmm, let's compare perhaps. They don't mesh. Let's go to uh, UV Image Editor and let's escape out of our render window. Escape out. No, nope. this needs to be 3D view. Oh, okay. I need to split the window first. There we go. UV Image Editor and Dragon Untitled. Okay, I think what I might need to do is when I unwrapped. Okay, those are all lined up. Nope, they're not lined up. I'm thinking. I'm thinking what I need to do. Where's my layers? Oh, tab out of edit mode. This guy. 
the high res version. That's what the tan the normal map's based off of. So what I need to do, don't worry, all is not lost. I've got two separate models here, but what I can do, piece of cake, is just duplicate this guy and move him to that first layer. Okay, now we'll go to that first layer. And he's now the, the base model we want now is Dragon 02. So I click it, and Dragon 01 is the one with the incorrect mapping. So I go ahead and delete him. And I'll grab Dragon 02, and he's like, oh, he's got that high resolution stuff on him. Now that's fine. It's just a modifier. All we got to do is bink, delete it. And we'll just go ahead and add the subdivision surface back on there. Okay, and now go to the Materials tab and grab that te dragon texture we just made and turn on our lights layer. Go into camera view, go ahead and save. Okay, and now when we render, everything should be lined up properly. Like so. However, like I said, I need to go nor uh, negative on our normal map. So we will go to the texture setting down to influence, make that negative one. Boom. Save. Save, save, save. There we go. And now when we render, we will see everything the way it should be. Okay, so there we go with that. Now, another thing I want to bake is the ambient occlusion, as I showed you in one of my little tips uh, a few days ago. Uh, let's make a new uh, image. We'll make that also 3000 by 3000. Okay, and I'll just leave it black, so no big deal. Um, let's turn off the light layer yet again, and let's go into the world settings here. We're going to turn on ambient occlusion. And if I just render it now with just ambient occlusion, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to see just black. I think I need to turn on the environment lighting as well. So let's see. Yep. Go and escape out. Don't need to render that. And by the way, I like to render into a new window. Go ahead and save. So that's saved on there. And go back to world settings, environment lighting. Uh, 0 0.5, that's probably fine. And let's see what it's going to look like. Shouldn't have any lighting at all except for the environment. Should have that nice ambient occlusion look about it. And it kind of does, but it's not quite as much as I'd like. And I like to use approximate myself. That's my preference. You can use whatever version you like, but I like to use approximate. And so now let's uh, let's make this a little brighter. Let's make this one, and see what that looks like. Okay, you can kind of see some darkness around where things meet each other, kind of the crevices and places like that. And that's what I want. So I'm going to bake this as another texture, and we'll use that to start painting the the. Um, the dragon's skin texture. So let's just go back to our our render settings there. Let's go all the way down back to the bake area. And this time I'm going to bake the ambient occlusion. And let's go ahead and do that. Bake. And slowly but surely it's rendering it out right here. And I think that's as far as I'm going to go on this part. In the next part, we'll take this ambient occlusion map that we've baked, and we'll go into Photoshop and, uh, and start using it to paint a nice burned texture into our dragon. Um, so that will be all for now. I'll go ahead and let you watch this finish out the render part. But uh, that'll be all for now on this section, part five. And hopefully everything's going the way you're hoping. <laughs> I hope that you hope it's, I don't know, never mind. Anyways, I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then. Go ahead and let that finish out. It's almost done. Piece by piece. Huh, 
slow but sure. Anyways, uh, you, you, mm, I want to, I want you to see what it looks like when it's done. So I will bite the bullet and let it finish. I was just gonna stop and say, you can see it later, but what the heck, might as well finish it out. Almost done, anyways. And clear out all the little pieces. It's taken a while. You can kind of see the progress meter up here, too. And nearly there, nearly there. And done. Okay. So now you can kind of zoom in here. Let's uh, hit control up to make this our maximized screen. So you can scroll on. You see these are obviously are the wings. And then probably the tail maybe, the neck, the head, and individual pieces. Anyways. So. And the inside of the mouth is black because everything's close together inside there. So, But that'll be fine. Anyway, so that's what the normal AO ambient occlusion normal map looks like when it's baked. So, anyways, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and save this. And again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Hello, and welcome to another Blender Cookie tutorial. This is David Ward, and we're going to be going into part six of our Dragon series here. We're going to finish up our texture mapping and see what he looks like then. Um, uh, a user comment uh, by, I believe her name was Renee, mentioned that the ambient occlusion uh, should be set to add rather than multiply like I had it before, and if you set it to multiply, or if, you, if it was set on multiply, we also had to have environment lighting to be able to see, but if you just turn it to add, you don't need any of the others. So I went ahead and did that, and uh, went ahead and baked out the uh, ambient occlusion map again and it, you can see it looks roughly the same but um, it, it probably rendered a little bit faster maybe but anyways we'll go with that one instead so um, go ahead and go into camera view I guess um, we rendered out the tangent normal map let's go ahead and go into our material setting here and to the textures okay so this is not the tangent normal map, it's the ambient occlusion. So let me make sure that's loading the right one. Dragon tangent normals, there we go. Except. Okay, there it is. So that's giving our, our dragon our bump texture. Now we want to start working on the color of his skin. So let's go down to this next spot in our little tier here and add new going to add a image or a movie and we're going to add that let's open it first I guess scroll down and it's right there the ambient occlusion map that we made and let's make sure it's going to be mapped to our UV settings okay and color is fine and so now let's make sure our ambient occlusion is turned off and I'm going to go ahead and turn on the layer that has our lights on it. And one other thing I want to do real quick that'll save some time because even though it's not visible, Blender's still calculating that it's there and it's making uh, your computer run a tiny bit slower. So, if we go into uh, that layer that our high-res dragon is on, we can go ahead and just delete him. And if you've saved him in previous versions, um, he, you'll still have access to him later if you want to do something else with him. Uh, so, to keep from saving over the copy that I have, I'm just going to go ahead and save as and name it this name this one 06. And I've been playing with it already, so I'll just go ahead and overwrite what I was playing with earlier. So now I will go to that layer and turn on that layer. And when we render out now, we should see. This was also playing with this earlier, and uh, it was not the correct one. So. This one should look correct. So we got the, the same uh, ambient occlusion mapped on top of our bump map with them. So you can kind of see where the dark, dark there's darker areas inside, like the crevices and and uh, things like that. So, anyways, that's exactly the way we want it to look. But we don't want a gray dragon. 
do we? We want a, a nice red dragon. So let's go back into our textures area and go to a new tier now. We're going to select new. And we could make the model itself red, but I myself, I prefer to leave the model kind of a grayish color. So when you do ambient occlusion renders, it kind of looks more professional in my opinion. You can do how you like, but this is the way I found to actually give it a solid color without having to give it a uh, texture. So we just go to blend and go down here, go to colors, turn on ramp. I'll just go ahead and this first one here is selected already the black color set to uh, alpha zero so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one and it filled it up with the one on this side which was white set to alpha 100 percent so I'm just gonna select this white and I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna make it a nice kind of a, a blood red like so okay so I guess we could go ahead and name this red and then why not name this one uh, AO, Ambient Occlusion, and then this one can be Normals. Okay. Now, little trick I want to use. I still want my dragon to have these nice shadows and the crevices and everything, but as it is now, he's just going to be solid red with, with none of that. So I just go over here and I hit the little up arrow, and it's going to move the red up above the Ambient Occlusion map. And you can see down here on our little preview that now the ambient occlusion is, it's kind of, it, as far as the color goes, it reads the bottom one uh, as being on the top layer of the dragon. So uh, you kind of think of it as the opposite of what you see. Red is actually below the AO. But I would like to see some of the red through the AO, so I'm going to go to my AO and scroll down here. Let's collapse this guy. And we can collapse this guy. And right here where it says blend, let's change that to multiply. And you go up and you can see the red and you can still see some of those shadows in the crevices and things. So let's go back to our materials and let's get rid of that awful red, that awful glare that we've got on them. Let's lower that way down. Actually, that's our diffuse specular is what we want to do. Lower that way down. Let's say 0.15 should be fine. And then the hardness, let's, we don't need to lower that too far. Let's make it, uh, uh, let's try 30. That might make it too dull. Let's make it 35, we'll say. Okay, let's go ahead and save. And we'll render out now. So now we should have a nice red dragon with the little shadows and the crevices. Well, there we go, that's looking pretty nice. However, I'd like to give him some black uh, claws and uh, mess with the inside of his mouth a little bit. It'll stay about the same color, but his teeth will need to change colors. So, uh, that's going to be a little difficult as we can't really see them. So, one thing I would like to do is show you how to create a shape key real quick so we can get in there and, uh, and see those teeth when we render out. So let's just go ahead and escape. And go ahead and save. All right. So I'm going to go into the side view and go into orthographic view by hitting 5 on my numpad. Just scroll in here. And let's go to our object data tab. We're going to create a new shape key. Just hit that one and it just gives you the basis, the shape that uh, is the base shape for things to occur. When it's, when it's in neutral position, this is what it's going to look like. This is the base shape. So we want to make his mouth open, we need to add a new shape. So we'll call this one jaw open. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to go in here, go tap into edit mode, go into my vertex select, and actually I want to go to my face select, and I want to select zoom out, and select all of his body and tail and everything. I guess it doesn't really matter as long as we're not working on that. But anyways, I want to select all these guys, control L, and I want to hide them. So now we just got the jaw and the inside of the mouth. Which, if I wanted to select just the lower lip, usually I would just select the face there and hit control L, but as you can see, it's kind of a loop there. So the way to get around that is, let's grab our vertex select mode, hit A to deselect everything. And let's select this loop right here that goes, that kind of divides the top lip from the bottom lip. Now we go into top view, you can kind of see that it's 
also outlining the tongue, which we don't want to deselect the tongue. So I'm going to hit C and hold down Alt and clear out these guys. This is kind of a trick to be able to see inside something that's closed. So we'll hit H now and it'll hide those vertices. And uh, I can now select one of these faces and hit Control L and then hide that. And now we can see the bottom of the mouth. And we can select our top teeth very plainly. Just click in here, all the ones that are pointing down. Make sure you select something on them and not seeing through it. Okay. Now we hit Control L and we missed this guy. Control L. Is that all of our top teeth? I believe so. Go ahead and hide. And now we have all of our bottom, the jaw, the bottom of our jaw, which was what we wanted to single out. So let's select all of these guys here. And what the heck, some of these guys back here. And let's go ahead and create a vertex group for those guys. So we're going to hit plus sign and we're going to say jaw. Okay. So now let's just hit Alt H and it'll unhide everything. But everything else is selected, so just hit A again to deselect everything. And uh, now we got our vertex group already created. Just hit select. Uh oh, I forgot to assign them. It's Control Z a couple times. There we go. Assign. <laughs> That's what you got to do. You got to assign these vertices to the group first. Okay. Now Alt H A to deselect everything. Now select. There we go. The only the jaw selected. So now I'm putting my cursor right about there, and I'm going to rotate around the cursor as you can see here. Make sure I'm on my right shape key and hit R and you can see that I have uh, the proportional fall off. So I need to turn that to either turn it off or just turn it to connected. So I'm going to turn it to connected and hit R, drag my mouse and just kind of turn that way down and kind of get an idea of what this guy going to look like when he's snarling. But you can, let's do it to about right there and let's go ahead and select these guys. Do it a little bit more. And what the heck, these guys. And a little bit more. Okay. So now I got our dragon snarling. Oh, we tabbed out edit mode and he snapped his mouth closed. Well, that's okay. We'll just go to our shape key controls here and change the value all the way up to 100 so we can see what we're doing. <laughs> kind of see some grossness going on here around this tongue. We need to go in and fix that. So let's just select this loop here around the back of his tongue. Like so actually, we're just going to face select mode. And I can just uh, hold on Alt Shift and click that loop there. W. And I'm going to smooth that back out so there's not so much ugliness going on. Okay, now I tab out, and it's cleaned up some. Okay, so now, kind of get a preview of how he's going to look. Rawr. Okay, so, now when we're messing with his, uh, with his texture map, we can see what we do when we do inside the mouth. We can see the color of the teeth and all those things. Let's go ahead and render that out just to get a quick idea. Rawr. Everything's black in there. Way too dark. Good thing we did this, so now we can see the problems with our teeth and everything. So, let's go ahead and... You know, one thing that we could do, I'll tell you what we could do. Now that his mouth is open, we could re-render those AO maps, and, uh, and it would clean that up because it's not closed together so closely. So let's try that. Let's see what happens. Uh... Rather than make you watch the render again, I'll just set it up and then I'll uh, I'll pause the recorder so you don't have to sit through it because remember it takes quite a while to render that. Uh, UV image editor, okay. Don't want the render results. Want a new image? Okay. So let's try that. Baking the ambient occlusion. In. I want selective to active and okay. Everything else should be fine. I'll pause it and see you on the flip side. Real quick, I got the uh, no images, no images to bake to problem again. Let me create a new image here, just real quick. Let's see if that'll help. Um, 
What was it going to make it? 2400 by 2400. Okay. And what the heck, let's go ahead and give it a UV test grid. Okay. Now let me go ahead and bake. Make sure everything's going to go properly. Hmm. Apparently not. No images found to bake to. Okay. May oh, well, my dragon wasn't selected now, was it? So that I guess that, that wouldn't be the problem. Okay, now let's see. Where's my... There we go. Okay, so now make sure dragon selected. Bake. Okay. I'll go ahead and pause the recorder so you don't got to sit there and watch it. And uh, I'll be right back. Okay, looks like it finished up here, and you can already see if you go in, you can already see the inside of the mouth looks a lot better. So I'm thinking, thinking this is the tongue. That's a lot better too. Let's go ahead and compare it with that previous version. Is the tongue? Hmm. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe that's not the tongue. Well, the mouth looks better anyways. So, anyways, let's just go ahead and save this. I'll go ahead and uh, save it as Dragon Ambient Occlusion underscore zero one dot PNG. Save. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and collapse those guys. And let's go to our Materials tab and the Textures. And on our AO map, let's go, just go to Images and just go in here go underscore zero one hit enter and it should now load our new one and uh, looks a little bit brighter even so now if we render out with our mouth open go ahead and save it should look a little bit brighter inside his mouth a little bit um, Still a lot of darkness around his teeth and everything, but that's fine. We can go ahead and fix that uh, in Photoshop. One thing I just noticed is there's some uh, weird colorations here in some areas, and honestly, I do not know what is causing that. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you. I honestly don't know. Um, the, everything should be fine. It rendered correctly a few seconds ago. I don't know why it's rendering badly now. Let's try it again. Maybe it'll look a little different. Hmm. Still there. I wonder what's causing that. A little bit of problems around his toes as well. Hmm. This is odd. Oh, well. Let's uh, just keep going and see, see if it doesn't get fixed. Uh, one thing I want to do instead of having all these stacked on here I'm just gonna go ahead and split my window again UV image editor there we go escape out X that okay go ahead and bake the texture also and that'll kinda combine everything together so let's go ahead and create a new image now 2400 by 24. I should get all the numbers 2400. There we go. Okay. Let's go ahead and bake out those textures. Okay. Bake. All right. Notice that's going quite a bit faster than the ambient occlusion because it doesn't really have to calculate anything. It's kind of just la layering them together. So now I'm going to go ahead and save as, and let's just go ahead and select one of those guys and just say dragon skin texture. All right, save as. Now we'll jump into Photoshop, open that bad boy up right there. Okay. And let's see what all needs cleaning up. I guess the inside of the mouth could use some. So let's go in here, grab our old pen tool, kind of just click and drag in here, outline everything. 
Didn't have to be perfect. Uh, because we're going to turn the fill all the way down to zero, and we're going to go inside here, layer style, just double clicked on the layer there, and I'm going to add an inner glow, and I want it to be more of a red color, like so, maybe a little grayer, about like that, that'll work. And I want it to come from the center, and I want it to kind of blend towards the edges rather than Let's make the opacity all the way up to 100% too. And also, blend mode needs to be normal. There we go. Maybe that's too bright. Make it a little darker. Yeah. And let's turn the opacity down just a little bit. Okay. There we go. Got the inside of her mouth done. Now, which one is the tongue? I wanted to say that this area here, which I guess has got the waviness of the tongue, but not for sure. Tell you what, let's do. Let's just put a mask over it with our pen tool. Okay, I need to adjust it right there. Okay. And I want to turn off the scroll till I can see the mouth. I want to turn off the layer style that I applied, and just turn the fill all the way back to up up to a hundred. And let's uh, let's grab that color that we created for the inside of the mouth. Is that the same? Select the color right there, and then select that color. Is it the same? I think so. Okay. So now let's. Uh, Let's save this. Go ahead and uh, Control Shift Alt S, and it's going to tell me it's bigger than web size designed for blah blah blah. But I like to optimize my images, so I'll set that to about 90%. Save and Dragon Skin Texture. We'll call this one. We'll just name. Go ahead and name it Zero One. Okay, back to Blender, and let's go ahead and close this out. Oop, back to Blender. I said, oh, that was the Blender render window. Okay. Let's go ahead and just make that smaller. Not sure I want to get rid of it totally. Grab my model, go to the texture settings, and let's just go ahead and delete all red right there. Go ahead and bump this guy back up to that level. And I want the source to be different. I want it to be the Dragon Skin Texture 01 that we created. There we go. And the mapping should still be UV, yes, and color, but I don't want it to multiply. I want it to go ahead and mix it this time. Okay, so now I go ahead and save. And this is what we had before. Let's go ahead and render again. And make sure our tongue is, and everything's going to be that more maroonish color than the red. And here we go, problems again. I do not know what is causing this. Looks like our mouth is the right color, but what's causing these problems? I don't know. Let's see if it could be the lighting, I guess. Let's just turn on the ambient occlusion. Add. Good. Turn off the light layer. And go ahead and render without the lights. Huh. It must be something. No. Still problems back here. Oh, that must have been the leg, not the tongue. I see. I see. Okay, well, at least we solved that weird um, um, problem with the artifacts showing up. It must have been something in the lighting. But uh, anyways, let's see. Let's go back into Photoshop. And let's delete that guy. Uh, one thing, one quick way to kind of figure out where all the colors are going to need to be and everything without just guessing like I was just doing is to just use the built-in texture paint function in Blender here. Let's just go to, where are we at? Textured view here on our dragon. You can kind of see what he's look what he's gonna look like with our texture on there okay and now I want to go to texture paint now I can choose a color go in oops 
too far. There we go. And just put a dash. Bloop. Right there. And then go over here and look. What did it just paint on? I don't even see anything. Let's go to view. Uh, check image painting on over here. Where? There it is. If I can scroll over there. There, there's our tongue. Was well, a little bitty guy, and he. Okay, go back to Photoshop. All right. So that's the tongue. Let's uh, let's make a shape around him. Okay. And I don't want it to be the inner glow, so I'll go ahead and kill that guy. But I do want it to be that color. So now I'll make the fill all the way up. And I would kind of like some of that shading to show through. So let's uh, let's set this to be overlay. Ooh, that's too much. Uh, well, I'll just, just uh, pardon my French. Uh, just set the fill down to 70%. All right. Okay, now then. Um, let's see, anything else we want to do? Yes, we want to color the claws and the teeth. So let's go back in here and grab a wider shade. The teeth. Make this window a little bigger. Oops, undo that. I accidentally painted over here. Undo, there we go. Make that window a little bigger. Uh, probably another thing we can do to make this go a little faster. Go to our... No, it's already set. Or just turn off the uh, subsurf uh, for now, and then we can navigate our scene a little better. Okay, so back to texture paint. Color we want for the teeth. Dash. Okay. So now we can kind of get an idea of where those teeth are located on our map. I guess they're all right there. Well, that begs the question, where are the claws? Dash. Okay, I guess these little guys are the teeth, and the big guys are the claws. Uh, that's not going to be fun. Okay, well, at least we know. Annoying is half the battle. So, back to Photoshop. Now these guys, the big ones, need to be that dark gray color that I would like. So let's just go in here and I'll set the fill down to real low so we can see through it. Okay, just kind of go in here and try to get fairly close along where the border should be between the claws and the teeth. Almost there. Okay. And done. Uh, I need to fix that guy right there. For those, those of you unfamiliar with the pen tool in Photoshop, I've got my direct selection tool uh, selected, and I selected a point that didn't have any Bezier handlebars on it, and just held down Control and Alt at the same time, and it turned it into the little caret symbol there, and I just click and drag, and it creates new handlebars there. Okay, so let's make that all the way up, and that's going to be a darker gray, like so. Okay, zoom out. And one thing that'll save us a little bit of time, where we don't have to outline around all those guys, is just click and drag a square. And let's grab this here. Let's get our pen tool and add a couple of points on here. A is that direct selection tool I mentioned. Select those. Okay, these are going to be the teeth, so let's make those kind of a, a dingy yellowish white about like that. Okay. 
and we'll just drag that down below our clause layer. Okay, so now almost there, almost there, don't worry. Uh, I believe these triangular shapes here are going to be our horns. So, grab our pen tool, and just outline around those. Like so. I'm wondering these might be some claws as well, but we'll, uh, we'll see what those are here in a few seconds. Okay, zoom out. And let's get that same gray color over there. So we'll just grab in here, pin, uh, eyedropper tool. Okay. Now let's go ahead and save this and apply it. It's going to be this guy right here. Save. Replace. Back to Blender. And go to Texture Settings and hit the little circular arrows here. It's going to reload. Okay, it looks like it already has. And just go ahead and cancel this out. I don't want that. Uh, turn off texture painting. And it's still showing where we painted, and I don't want that. Okay, anyways, let's see what it looks like when we render F12. Okay, ooh, that's looking pretty nice. How about that, huh? Those teeth really set that mouth off, don't they? Those claws, I guess those were claws on the what I was talking about. So let's, uh, I kind of like to darken them as well. It's not quite as dark as I would like. So let's uh, escape out. Let's save, because we're doing pretty good here. Okay, back to Photoshop. And zoom in here. Oh, my computer's kind of lagging. I don't know why. I guess all these little doodads. See, there's one, two, three. Hmm. One, two. It's got might be. What's this over here? Is that teeth as well? I wonder. Let's go back and look at that render. Yep, yeah, I bet that is. Those looks like there's some front teeth right there on the top that aren't white. So let's get those white as well. I know this is tedious, tedious work, but you got to do it if you want it to look nice. So we are almost done with this, though, so don't you worry. One thing you can do to, ha to keep from having to change the color on multiple layers, multiple shapes that are all going to be the same color, is you can just go onto that shape. Zoom out, we can see which one it is. Probably this guy here. Right. And uh, we'll go to Pen Tool and just to hit the Add to Shape area. So now, when I make a new shape, it's just going to add it to that one layer. So I don't have to go change the colors on all the layers that have this. I will on the previous ones that we did, but not on these ones here. So. Okay, kind of came out of lines right there. Okay, I think, oh, one more right there. Okay. Okay, now, let's change those to be a little bit darker. About like that. Get that one to be that same color. And this guy. Oops. There we go. Okay, so now I can control save, control shift alt save, skin texture save, replace. And now we will apply it to our dragon. Actually, we can just reload. Think. There we go. You can see it reloaded over here in that window as well. So now we hit render. Let's go ahead and change our angle of our camera just a little bit. Let's go into our layer that has our camera on it. Grab the camera. 
Let's rotate it down. We can see more of the open mouth inside here. Okay. Turn that layer back off. And F12. All right, all our teeth are there, all our claws are there. One thing I just noticed though, we don't have our tangent normal maps anymore. So let me see what's going on with that. Normals, good. Hmm. Tell you what, sometimes uh, things get loaded into our little previews and then they just they don't change like I mentioned earlier like they stay in the preview settings but they stay in the memory buffer but they don't pull from the actual file so what I'm gonna do is save and then I'm going to just load a new scene and when I open that file again it should have cleared out all those that weren't attached to anything so now the normal map should actually you know what it may be hmm. it's not going to render normals I guess for that anyways <laughs> it's getting late and I'm getting tired so let's see what we can do with that those lightings and uh, maybe we can Let's set that bias wait, a little further up. That's a little too low, I think. Maybe that's giving us some problems. Go ahead and save this. And uh, turn off the ambient, or let's just turn ambient occlusion to about, uh, let's say 0.35. And that layer with the lights is on. So go ahead and save. And let's see what we look like now when we render. <laughs> Big money, come on. No artifacts. Looking good so far. Okay, I think that's good. We've got some weirdness going on here, but I don't think that's an issue. Um, okay, I think our dragon is textured. Um, I'm running out of time where I'd go in and do the eyeballs as well. Um, but I might have to have you look at my other eyeball tutorial for that and then just go ahead and start on rigging in the next one. I'll talk to uh, Mr. Burke about that and see what he says. I might go ahead and throw that into part 7. But otherwise, um, you'll just need to do some homework on your own and, and do that one. So anyways, that'll be all for part six. And thanks for watching. Pardon my stumbling around here and there, but uh, I think overall we got something nice going on here. So thanks for watching again, and I'll see you next time. Sorry, let me add one thing real, real quick. You'll have to forgive me. I didn't notice until after I had saved the video that or hit stop and saved the video that the last render still did not have the ambient or the uh, the tangent normal map applied and showing up when we rendered so um, I went back in and played with it and it just turns out I just needed to just go in here and just delete it start over sometimes that's the best technique to do so just deleted it added it as a new texture and set everything up the way we did before and now when we render it'll show up the way it's supposed to I guess maybe I did something wrong in the in the timeline here, but uh, I guess it is still a development software, so maybe there's just a few bugs still left in it. So anyways, this is what our dragon should look like once we render it. got our scales here and there, our white teeth and black horns and, you know, darkness around some of the crevices and things like that. So anyways, this is the guy. This is what it's supposed to look like. So anyways, this is it. So thanks for watching again, and I'll see you in part seven.